I have a special guest. It's a flashback to the past. The leader in my industry, the CEO and founder of Paradigm Sports, Adi Attar, welcome to The Playbook. Thanks, Dave, appreciate you having me. I appreciate you being here and your patience because that was like the eighth take of my introduction. <laughs> and he's sitting here patiently going, Dave, how can you screw up my position at Paradigm when I'm a legend? Anyway, you also get an award, Adi, for being the best dressed person I've had here at SoFi. Everyone thinks because it's a stadium that you don't have to dress up, man. You look like a million dollars. I figured you were gonna have VIP status and indoor air conditioning, so I took the chance here. And you were right, thank goodness, that's for sure. Well, you know, everyone always wonders how you get to be the notable sports agent, the notable agent in general. It's a dream for every frustrated athlete, even the ones that play Division I football. Once the game is ended for you, it's like, what can I do to stay in the game? And I think sports agentry becomes the first choice of so many frustrated athletes whose dreams have died. Was that the case for you? I think I always saw myself as an advocate. You know, even when I was a player, I was an advocate from, from not just myself, but for my teammates. And at home, I was an advocate. <laughs> and so I think it just was almost programmed in my, uh, my, my psyche and the way I operated. So when my opportunities to continue to play at the next level didn't materialize as I wanted them to, I went to the next best thing. It's like, how do, how do I stay in sports? How do I continue to give back to something that's given me so much from a college education to a, a life, a network? Um, and so advocacy was where my true start, you know, got going, if you will, within the agent world. And then it just continued to evolve because one of the things I was very fortunate of is to have an immigrant father who was, you know, came here three hundred dollars in his pocket. The immigrant story and ended up being an engineer and, and an inventor. And so he was always instilling entrepreneurship, creativity, innovation, you know, and it's something that I was very fortunate to grow up around um, and through his you know his failures were successes at the end of the day too and that taught me a lot so that coupled with my athletic experience i think was how i found myself down this path and that path i know the leaders of that path like you founding paradigm being ceo of paradigm well is, first of all that's a huge compliment coming from oh, someone like you so but I, we, had, we shared honor, the same really. thing right although you were a better football player than i was uh, the, the I don't know. Advocacy. I don't know about that. <laughs> I do. Uh, the advocacy or ambassadorship is so important under the context of we took the percept the perspective of how can I provide value, not how can I take. Yes. And the majority of the people way back when I was in the industry was how can I make like a real estate broker? How can I maximize make as much my money. commission? Right. Right. I mean, it literally was that way. And the guys who are successful today in the front offices of teams, the Mike Tannenbaums, the Al Guidos, the Jake Reynolds, just to name a few, and you, you are more interested in providing value and not worried about what you're going to make. I truly believe that purpose will drive the profits. And I've heard that. <laughs> that phrase, it's been said by so many amazing entrepreneurs and it's so true to what I subscribe to. Because if it's, if you're, if you're just trying to tra chase a quick buck, you're going to be found out in this game. You know, you know this yourself, right? Having been a former athlete, having been in the game for so long, there's authenticity in what we do. And at the end of the day, these young athletes, that's what they want. They want real. They don't want fake. They want purpose. They don't want someone just making a name or a profit off, the, off their, their hard work. They want someone that's really going to contribute to their journey, albeit a small part of their journey. So I think for me, it's always just about being real, you know, and when I first started Paradigm, there were so many failures. And yeah. I remember I wanted to raise money and I thought I needed money. And I was like, well, how am I going to make money? I'm paying for all this stuff. And but ultimately you find a way, you know, it's one of those things that it's the real ones will make it. it you, 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 ha you could have the best idea in the world. Nobody's going to believe in it if you don't believe in it at the end of the day. So you just have to find a way and stop looking for that validation from the outside world and make sure that it's all rooted within purpose. And with that pur purpose also comes vision. And, you know, in all industries, especially sports, people love to stick, no pun intended, to the paradigm that exists. And it's so interesting, look at baseball, which isn't growing at the same pace as other sports where they're shifting the paradigm, where they have a vision. One of the things I loved about 
working with Lee Steinberg. And the reason people ask me, how did you go from being CEO of Samsung to running the most notable sports agency? And I said, because I had a technology background and Lee Steinberg saw the future of sports in technology. Now I was lucky to have a law degree, lucky to know sports and been a customer of Lee's hiring people to be, you know, endorsements and, and you know, for Samsung to, to do appearances. But the real reason he selected me wasn't because I had a better resume. It was how many guys had that background and were an executive in technology. I think that was, um, that was forward thinking and obviously Lee's a pioneer in the business. And uh, for you to recognize that, that was huge as yeah, well. But I was lucky, right? and, and, but I recognize the same thing in you. In fact, oh, the previous you. conversation when we first started, obviously you're dealing in alternative sports, not traditional stick and ball sports as well. But now one of the first things we were talking about is I kind of talked about an introduction I could help you with. You're like, oh, I got a whole you know Web3 division, Dave. We got six people. And I did not blink an eye because I figured the leaders in the sports industry are visionaries like Lee Steinberg. And I hope you take it as a compliment. I, it's a huge compliment. I'm, I'm flattered and, and honored to receive that compliment. And when you started, what was your vision? Because it was different than the traditional paradigm that existed, like the one that Jeff Morad, who's also a Bruin, you know, had by going had, to get Had the pleasure of having lunch with Jeff the other day. He's an amazing person, isn't he? Yeah, he really is. And, you know, Funny that you talk about a paradigm shift because that's where the name comes from. It came from the fact that I was working as an NFL agent for the first seven years of my career and I saw things just being done wrong by, you know, pioneers of that business that I, I that I worked with and philosophical differences of what it really meant to be an agent. And right? going back to kind of purpose, right, is that, you know, the game is such a violent game. Oftentimes you have to be ready for an abrupt ending to a career and really help that athlete transition into the next phase of their life. And there's probably three more quarters of life to live for them at that point in time, being in their earlier mid twenties, if you will, right? So it, it, was a perp it was a paradigm shift that I had. And so I went back to business school, went to Pepperdine for business school, and I went Pepperdine Law, did uh, my master's certificate dispute resolution. And it's at that point in time, I launched the firm and I was like, what, what name do I come up with? What, what do I use? And it was really because I had a paradigm shift, the way I live my life, the way I approach business. And I wanted to create a firm that was rooted in advocacy that empowered athletes to go far beyond just their athletic careers and, and far beyond just me exceeding that contract, if you will, and, and getting them a couple sponsors here and there. Right. I wanted to really build something that was holistic and I, I, I kind of got away slowly from football because the thesis evolved into focusing on high growth sports, being best in class from a management perspective as advocates, build media and content in and around our athletes and our ecosystem and build a business venture platform. As the world was getting smaller and probably because my immigrant mentality, I have friends and family everywhere. And so I saw the internet really bringing everybody closer together and the athlete having a larger voice. So we could disrupt any sector that aligns organically with us. So long as we make sure we have operating expertise, supply chain route to market and some strategic capital, we could disrupt anything. And so it was a bold vision. And, and it was because of that paradigm shift, I embarked on that journey with literally my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, uh, by my side. And I remember, you know, we got married shortly thereafter and it was like we were maxing out credit cards. And, you know, that was when I was like, oh, man, I need investors. And I would tell people the vision and, and you know, what first high growth sport I was going to enter into, which was MMA. And, you know, yeah. People were laughing at me. Scoffing at, at you, day. making fun of you. Oh, man. Now they, they applaud you and tell you I knew you could do it. <laughs> Some do. So I, yeah, <laughs> I've been and, there. You know, but it's it's rewarding, right? To be able to know that we did it and we we executed and we're continuing to execute. But we're not we're not done. No. And I, I have to ask you a question. It's probably a little bit different than other questions you've been asked, only because it's an important one to me. I just celebrated my twenty fifth wedding anniversary. I've known my wife since the fourth grade, hated me. I asked her to go study at sixth grade campus. She said no. So I threw an egg at her. Happy um, anniversary, <laughs> by the you. way. But it, it struck me when you were talking about your wife, how important when as entrepreneurs, we have to have an intimate partner that while everyone else, including ourselves, are doubting ourselves and everyone else is laughing at us, that even if they're not always verbally telling us they're behind us, 
all their actions say, hey, I believe in you. And nobody knows us better than our parents or our intimate uh, partner. Mm -hmm. And it struck me, I could see that glare that I have in my eyes when you were saying, you know, yeah, nobody really believed in me and I had this crazy idea. Nothing great ever happens without a crazy idea or else it would have happened already. Facts. <laughs> right? <laughs> and then it's not a crazy idea. How important was that time? Because look, you took a, a successful career seven years in and go back to an expensive school, JD MBA. This time not on scholarship. Right, <laughs> yeah, like exactly. My, my you're, paying, you're at least going into debt for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? I know that feeling too. But how important is it to you still today to have that intimate partner that when everyone else thinks you're absolutely insane, that just has a faith knowing who you are and what you're made of, like your parents and your intimate partner, that you'll get it done. It may not be like you think you're gonna get done, and I know we're gonna go through pain. You're gonna have all these failures and setbacks mm -hmm. and lose some money, but I'm here and I'll be here to pat you on the back, unlike the rest of them while you're doing it and when you did it. I think it's so important and I was, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm beyond. Well, she's blessed. obviously yeah, blind she, and deaf. She, I can see that. She is. She is. She's definitely. <laughs> like my wife. I outkick my coverage. Like, as, that as that say, we have in common. Usually, exactly. Right. But you know, she's she, this an Ivy League girl. She's beautiful. She. I was like, I had no business. She had a job. I did it. You know, like I had no business. You won the lottery. And, and exactly. In in being able to win her over, but I was very fortunate to have her by my side, and she did motivate me. She was. Comforting at times when I needed comfort. She, was, she kicked me in the ass when I needed a little bit of motivation, you know, and challenged me when I needed to be challenged. And that's what you need. You know, it's not always perfect to your point. Sometimes it's not necessarily always, you know, verbal communication. It's the nonverbal communication. More importantly, the support, right? And when you're looking up that hill and you're, you got to go, you got to go, right? And yeah. so it's very important. And whoever it may be, I mean, it, it, whether if you don't have a girlfriend or a wife or it's your parents, if you don't have parents, it's a garden. If it's not garden, it's friends. It's sometimes or a coach, it, a coach. Sometimes it's even, and I didn't have mentors coming up. I, I honestly wanted them, but I just didn't have them. It's, but it doesn't mean I didn't have my wife and my, my dad and my mom and my sister. And so I did have, and even friends that believed in me that some of them now are on my team, right? right. And so at the end of the day, however you could find that support, you know, make sure your eyes are wide open and your ears are open and you're listening and you're, in, and you may not agree with it all, but take it, process it, see how you apply it to your own, you know, daily practice, if you will, on, on your journey, because it, it's very helpful and sometimes, the comfort is needed. You need that, you know, you know, reinforcement, if you will, once you start to doubt yourself, because that's also natural too. We all doubt ourselves. Without a doubt and still do. I just want to spend minutes and moments in that doubt, not days, weeks, months, and years like a lot of people. I will tell you, if you came to interview with me, I wish you did. Definitely you should have brought your girlfriend or wife at the time. I would have said, this guy can get a client and keep it. Because <laughs> uh, that's a competitive field and oh, space yeah. that uh, you participated in. Well, let's talk about the future. Now you represent some unbelievable athletes, but also brands and the future holds, you know, I saw the other day, someone at a press conference said, Hey, you know what? Check out 15 minutes. Come meet me on, you know, my step and repeat <laughs> on my podcast. And I said, Oh boy, these contracts are going to change fast because these billionaires that own these teams, understand intellectual property better than the athlete does. Now they're leveraging its switch. The paradigm has shifted, but I promise you it's going to shift back because you're not going to sign these big deals and be able to do that in, in a short amount of time. What do you see as the future? You know, you have some really great talent, great winners, champions, but you also have great brands. And those are two separate things that need separate advocacy. Yeah, I agree. I look, I think things are have already evolved and shifted back when we were able to pull off Mayweather McGregor you know people said that was impossible right people that it's awesome, we worked with said it was impossible <laughs> I'm and, clapping and, for you <laughs> thank you but even on the back of that we launched our whiskey we launched our entrance into whiskey into into e-com apparel and so to your point we used that platform to then also incubate and launch what was next for us and you know we had to continue to negotiate then it wasn't even an issue but now it's like you have to negotiate that into your deals to your point because owners are 
becoming even more protective of IP as it relates to even ventures, if you will, right? So it's not anymore just about what logo you could wear because my sponsor is this and your sponsor is that, right? It's got, again, a lot more technical. And I do think innovation is going to continue to, to you know, uh, be at the forefront of our industry because it's a meta market, right? So it's not just sports anymore. It's not just content anymore. It's technology, it's ventures and ventures goes across every sector. It could be web three. It could be, it could be whiskey. It could, it could be movies. A, movies. It could be all different types of sectors that so long as they organically align with the athletes and or ecosystem, I think that's the key, right? Cause consumers are too hip and too smart and they just don't want to deal with fake. Right. And yeah. so if it's authentic, if it's organic, if it's real, then consumers going to listen. And if it's positioned as such, without being forced down their throat, if you will, right? Just as a fake commercial, then it's going to be, I think it's gonna have a higher level of success than it would if it was just, you know, uh, uh, just the same old advertising. And I think, you know, as a last topic, I wanna to talk about the size, scope and scale of the audience. You mentioned the Mayweather McGregor fight. I think to me, that was a moniker of how big the audiences are now. Think the TAM. It, yeah. The total addressable market. It was one of the ways we were able to get that over the line. It's that, okay, well, there's never been a crossover. Okay, well, okay, the UFC doesn't want this or that. Okay, but look at look at the analytics. Look at the numbers. Look at the TAM, right? Look, let's, let's take advantage of this opportunity together, right? And that, I think for us was, you know, what helped us get that over the line. Um, and it's kind of how we've been a attacking our ventures as well and all the different business development opportunities that we're partaking with our clients and as a platform. And I think it's important to understand that, really. And within the context of the TAM, of that total addressable market, prioritization becomes the most important quality of a leader. And I can see from the amount of productivity that you have, the value you're providing, the amount of accessibility, just you being here and you being at different concerts here and everywhere else I see you, but also the gratitude mm. uh, that you can have still within the context of being in a very productive and accessible environment. How have you learned to prioritize all the different options, opportunities, and touches of favor that exist in your life now? I'll answer to you truthfully and in short. All first right. of all, I suck at it. Oh, yeah? <laughs> that's, really? that's how I feel. That's my expertise, man. <laughs> that's how I feel. Let me be your now, prioritization now, me uh, mentor. Now, that's what, my superpower. One of the things I've tried to focus on is compartmentalizing things, being present in everything I do, and you know, constantly evolving and just understanding that I'm always going to learn and I'm always going to get better. And if today is better than yesterday and tomorrow is better than today, I'm on the right path. So that's kind of that's the mantra I live by and you know how I operate, but I still feel like, oh my gosh, I got to get this, 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 and this is done yesterday. And so that's why I started out by saying I suck because in my <laughs> mind, I'm not, I'm not where I want to be. And yeah. maybe that's part of it as well. Like, you know, but I think part of it, the key for anything's being present, be present with whatever you're doing. I'm here with you. I'm present. As soon as I get off with you and I'm going to be driving home with my wife, I'm going to be present. And then I'm going to get on a call. I'm going to be present. And so, there's that, and then there's also making sure you're constantly understanding what your North Star is and all the different projects that you're working on. How, how do you get to that North Star? And on, of all those projects that are on the horizon, if you will, what's the most important? And what is actually something that's just time consuming that's not going to get you to that North Star? So those are just some, I think, things I try to think through and how I operate a little bit. But... I still don't think I'm good enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's because over, being overwhelmed is a blessing. It's yeah. actually living in abundance. But you have a, a great gear on prioritization, which is knowing what's important to you and following a trajectory of what you think you want in the future, but having an open mind to change it. And you've done such a fantastic job doing that. We have to do more together. That's a plea love and an ask. Um, Adi, you're incredible. CEO, founder of Paradigm Sports. But you know, just a charismatic winner. That's uh, Thank you the so way much. I would describe you. I get, you know, over 12, I'm, I'm honestly 12, 1,200 of people here. And Thank I will you. tell you, when the real deal comes around, you know it's the real deal. You are the real deal. I'm Dave Meltzer. This is Entrepreneurs, The Playbook.